hear the rumble of the quarry as they blow bits more more up. I wonder if you find any mammoths in that bit. Yeah, you can hear the rumble. If you're closer over there, you hear the sirens go off. Anyway, this is what's called Velvet Bottom. Also videoed several times. And I, would, I, I know my sister Jude has walked where I've walked today. This is one place I know because she told me that she'd been here. I can imagine her and Stuart walking here as well. And I've seen the striders. <laughs> There's lots of what I call normal walkers. But if I meet somebody they're dead unfriendly and uh, they're cleaning off their stick all the time and they don't smile. I call them striders and then they stride off. Not a smile, not a hello, not a goodbye. I've seen them anyway, they're ahead. Here's an old potola. This is obviously mine, it could be a mine even. This is uh, well documented. Velvet Bottom has the mining. This place would have been, the sky wouldn't have been blue when the Victorians were here. They would have had their chimneys and the black smoke booming out uh, as depicted on one of the plaques uh, that there was further up. So it was only just gone 12. So I decided to do Velvet Bottom today. I do like doing it. The risk when I get up the top by the masks, masts is um, a very muddy track is a possibility. So there's a great possibility I'll have to get into a field early. Now when I came the other week I'd done a walk and uh, I went across the bottom part of the area of Outstanding Beauty. I went across the bottom and then I went headed for Longwood. But um, on that occasion, when I was uh, approaching Longwood, from a short distance I could actually see a, about two or three hundred cows going in to be milked. Now it could work out by the time I get to that situation again, if those cows are still out, they will have be doing the same again, going in for milking. So once again, I could have timed this walk because they occupy a field, fields leading up to Longwood. Those cows do. Anyway, it's a beautiful day, everyone. This could be the fourth video of the 4th of November, 2020. It's all right, it's not cold. I've decided not to take my jumper off or anything because it is, there is a bit of a breeze. I've got a scarf, hat and gloves if necessary. I've taken them off. That's kept me a bit from overheating. I've got winter trousers on, which are already covered in mud. And I've got a, a winter fleece on. And I'm glad I've got it on. And a light late summer autumn jacket duffel coat type thing, a light one. In my bag also, because things could change, it could break your leg, you've got what you don't know. I have brought my windshield waterproof trousers. They're not as waterproof, that those ones, as they used to be, but they keep off the wind. I'll probably get most cold when I'm waiting for the bus. That's what normally happens and the bus will be freezing. And the worst thing, I had to open all the windows when I got on the bus this morning. This is Covid times. Two people on the bus weren't wearing, who I could see, weren't wearing their masks properly. As soon as they got sat down, they removed their masks or had them half hanging. And the windows were all shut. The place was steamed up. So before anyone got on and I got on first, I opened all the windows. 
about six rows back I heard somebody coughing and sneezing so it's a big risk hopefully they kept their mask on when they were doing that <sighs> but it's going to be no more risk in a month's time after lockdown the situation is exactly the same you know it has been from day one but anyway we're out in the beautiful Somerset countryside I'm just starting to feel a bit peckish <coughs> haven't had anything yet I've got um, what have I got for lunch I've got cheese and tomato packet of cheeselets um, a bar of chocolate Yorkie a small bar of chocolate two oranges banana there could be more there could be more And of course there's the odd sweet that I'm enjoying as well. <sighs> so I've got nutriment and I'm enjoying this walk, I'm enjoying the fresh air. Um, I haven't been out properly for over a week, only to go to shops. Um, I think it was a week ago I managed to get up in the wood for a short walk. Um, so it's, it's good to get out and I'm going out tomorrow up my local wood because they predict mist and I'm hoping to capture the trees and the mist because it refracts the light differently coming off the trees with lovely beams so I want to do that, I want to be up there be, before midday I'd like to get up there early really and then um, Friday is supposed to be a good day so Friday will either be a, I don't think it'll be a cycle, I think it'll be too windy. So it might be a sand bay, or it might be Route 33 to Breen and back. Those are what my local walks, which I do get a bit fed up with in a way, because I like to go further afield. And of course now I haven't got the van. I can't just nip over to Holford. Um, today would have been a good day to have gone to Holford via train and bus. Um, but I think I'll leave it. I did say I was going to have a break from Holford. Last year, in 2019, I visited Holford every month. I've got videos and photos of Holford and the Quantocks every month of 2019. I made a determined effort to go every month. And I got to know them very well. So a break is okay. I've been over there once, twice this year. I went over there about the 10th of January this year. And again, about June-ish just to see if, how I can get out there really without a vehicle and it means and it's, it was okay it didn't take long basically I just got on a train to Taunton didn't take long half an hour at most then I got on a bus hardly waited at all which dropped me off not at Holford of course because there's no bus stops there no it's at uh, Picanola Picknoller. And I walked up Weecom, Coombe, to Holford Green and then came back and picked up the bus again. And I, I just felt relieved I knew I could get out there if I really needed to, if you know what I mean. I wanted to know that it was possible for me to get out there. So I haven't been out there during the rutting season or the hunting. I don't know if the hunting has been going on. Um, I think it's a flipping 
disgusting if they are, considering everyone else has got to give up their sports. Um, I feel sorry for the whole country. The small businesses that have just kept how they hung on after the last lockdown. And they started to build up again. They did every precaution you could think of to keep their businesses going. Um, that includes, you know, all distancing, hand washing, everything you can think of to help their business. And that, that, that some of them, you know, they've got loans. Um, people have got their little waitressing jobs, bar, bar work, all gone. All going for another month and maybe even up to Christmas, some people are saying. The virus isn't going to go away just with a month break. What they're trying to do is protect the NHS. Because they're already, their beds are already filling up with normal lot people. Right then. Back on everyone. Had to change battery. <sighs> Batteries aren't very good at the moment, really. They're well used, you see. Puddling. I don't know if it's called puddling, but you've got these dips. This is um, velvet bottom, by the way. This is all the areas that were mined. Places that were dug out. And uh, I've got a feeling it's called puddling, but I might not. That might mean something else. I just can't remember. But anyway, the Romans and the Victorians were here. And it's a beautiful day on the 4th of November, 2020. It's the USA presidential election results. They've stopped um, the polls now. People are, they're counting the votes now. And it was sort of very, very close. Uh, it's gonna take a couple days, apparently, to count some of them. I mean, it is a big country, don't forget. Uh, I think Pennsylvania's the one that could take two or three days for counting. Um, but I think they've they both had some victories. Now I have brought my small radio with me today. When I have my cheese and tomato, and well, hopefully I can stand or sit somewhere to have that a bit later on, I'm going to put the radio on. But I'll probably do it when I get to the, the masts. I've decided I'll do that. There's a gate I can prop myself up against and I'll put the radio on for should be able to get a good signal when I lose master <sighs> that's the plan A eh? um, yeah I think a lot of people today the traffic was quite heavy I reckon a lot of people are heading for Weston to do their shopping and, and bulk buy but of course, I was telling people, you shouldn't have to do that. It's only supposed to be a month and there's going to be supplies. What happens when people bulk buy? They remove what would have been normal for normal times. They make it a shortage by people being greedy, panicking. Panic buying, it's called. We've all done a bit. I mean, I've turned my freezer back on. I've hardly got anything in there be quite honest I tend to go day by day uh, you do when you're on a low income I get a few supplies in like peas you know a couple of meals some meat I've got I've been building up a stock of um, tins for the winter when the winter definitely comes rice you know all that sort of thing I just put in um, beans soup Pilchards, tins of ham and corned beef, tin stuff. In case you turn the power off. Um, also some packet rice. I've got some flour, plain and self raisin. Um, and the other thing I've got to do really is get some camping gas cylinders just in case I can't, because I've got all electric. Um, you know, I haven't got gas, so I can't, like, think, oh, well, I'll put the gas cooker on or anything. Um, it would be no heating. You couldn't even boil a kettle for your hot water. That's how bad it would be. It would be quite bad. Um, if the heating went off completely. 
Oh, I'm already economising anyway. At the moment, I have people say, oh, I've turned the heating on. I don't turn heating on. I don't have central heating. I've got these fires attached to a wall. I've got hot water bottles. And I've got a dehumidifier. That will... But, of course, none of those things will work. Nothing. See what I mean? But all I like remember from the 70s when I was a student living in Brighton was when we had the blackouts. Um, no one done the rubbish either. It was like, I, don't, I can't remember we didn't power at the time. Might be Margaret Thatcher. I can't remember actually. Anyway, they weren't like 24 hour, 12 hour blackouts. They tended to do them in the evening for a couple of hours. It could have been three or four hours, you didn't have any power. So you just had to do everything before, you know. And if you've got flasks, fill them up with hot water. That, that's the best thing to do. I've got two big flasks and a small one, which is enough to uh, keep your hot drinks going and fill up your hot water bottles. Cover them up as much as you can to put them in the bed. And... Uh, that's all you can do, really. It's awful that we've got to think like that, but I think it's going to come. If no one's got any work and the economy starts going downhill, how is anything going to get paid? These people that make all these decisions, they're already well off. They can just disappear. They can disappear and they're okay. They ain't got a problem. They, they don't care about the rest of the people. Not really. They're playing games. Social, economic, engineering. And cultural now. Things have changed a lot. No pop groups. No festivals. No pubs. No bars. No restaurants. Um, only takeaways. They did decide overnight that pubs can now do takeaway beer. <laughs> They've decided that. Some shops are, of course, open. Most supermarkets will. Um, they were going to stop people buying things like kettles and toasters and <sighs> clothes. I mean, that is ridiculous. They are essential items. I'm putting all this on video because when I did a video there last time we hadn't heard of Covid was that clay, if you know what I mean, not properly there weren't lockdowns and all that right, I'm going to turn off somebody coming <laughs> 